Good afternoon, Dunkirk and Fredonia listeners, and welcome back to this Monday's edition of News at Noon. I am Fredonia Radio Systems News Director Cassio Fonseca, here today with news assistants Lee Pai and Joshua Ribikov. And in this Top of the Hour update, we'll bring you the latest on news and events around SUNY Fredonia's campus and community, as well as the latest in national news and weather. First up, we'll bring it to Lee for our latest campus news updates. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lee Pai with your campus news. The campus just finished its spring break, so I help hope everyone is feeling at least a little refreshed. While we were gone, faculty member of the English department, Dr. Van Wessenbeck, has been invited to join a roundtable at the Northeast Modern Language Association on the concept of a study abroad of study abroad programs. uh, And it will look what and what will it look like in a post COVID world? Dr. Van Wessenbeck's topic she will be discussing will be, quote, study abroad in Iceland, sustaining the cosmopolitan logic in a post-COVID world, end quote. The Fredonia Dance Ensemble will be presenting its annual concert this weekend in the Marvel Theater. FDE director Paula J. Peters explained that the process of the dance performance takes about a year to produce. First, they have to find out which dance the faculty which dance faculty will choreograph, which guest choreographers will be chosen, and what piece will fit best for the students. About 22 Bachelor of of the Fine Arts dance majors will be performing, and about 20 students coordinate the designs and technical production of the performance. Mrs. Peters said, quote, by the time all the performances are over, the choreographers and dancers will have collected collectively spent roughly 130 hours creating, rehearsing, and performing the choreographic content of the performance. The amount of time spent on the production by the design and technical production students is comparable, end quote. This year, there will be four works, Futile Ground by guest choreographer Sumi Clements, divided by guest choreographer Dale A. Merrill, Rove by guest choreographer Ryan McMullen, and Septem- Septennial by Paula J. Peters. The Fredonia Dance Ensemble 2023 performance will take place Friday, March 24th at 7.30 p.m. and Saturday, March 25th at 2 p.m. and Saturday, March 25th at 7.30 p.m. in the Marvel Theater of the Rockefeller Building. Andrea J. Cook will be coming to campus to talk about the traditional roles of the Hoden Oshani woman as an Onondaga woman herself. She will be talking about how the roles are maintained in changing times for the seven generations. She will be presenting on Thursday, March 23rd, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. in McEwen Hall, room G26. That's Campus News Today. I'm Lee Pai with your Campus News. Thanks, Lee. Next up, we'll have local news. And in local news for today, Fredonia's state-run higher education campus won't be a college anymore as of April 1st. Fredonia President Stephen Colson told the College Council last Wednesday the state had approved a change from college to university status. The official name of the institution will now be the State University of New York at Fredonia. It is currently known as the State University of New York College at Fredonia. This move was something Colson pushed for to hopefully help student recruitment efforts. He's noted that universities are considered more prestigious than colleges in academia. He added last Wednesday that the name change should clear up some confusion about the campus and its branding. Quote, now we don't have to feel like we're trying to do anything illegitimate, he said. The switch in status was spurred by rule changes last year about what constitutes a college versus a university in the SUNY system. Many other SUNY branches have taken advantage of the new rules to apply for and receive a university designation. President Colson said SUNY Fredonia will have to commit to an increase in graduate programs in order to maintain the university status. The school plans a formal announcement of the name change sometime in the coming week. Colson said there will also be a toast for the new designation at SUNY Fredonia's annual retirement slash years of service banquet in April. He concluded with, it's a tremendous milestone for the campus. That's all for local news. In national news today, we bring it to Josh. 
Hello there, folks. I'm your host, Josh Rubikov, with today's national inter and international news. This morning, Chinese leader Xi Jinping arrived in Moscow for a visit with Vladimir Putin and will allegedly be staying with the Kremlin for three days. According to Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov, the two intend to discuss the issue of Ukraine, and Putin will likely give a detailed explanation of Moscow's perspective on the war. This visit comes just a few days after the International Criminal Court, or ICC, issued an arrest warrant on Putin for committing war crimes. Although the ICC is not recognized in the United States, China, Russia, or Ukraine, they have issued the arrest warrant for the abduction of thousands of Ukrainian children. It seems China might be seeking to end the to put an end to the war, as just last month, China called for a ceasefire in Kiev and Moscow, attempting to open them up to peace talks. The Secretary of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council, Oleksiy, da <clears throat> Oleksiy Danilov, posted a tweet this morning regarding Ukraine's demands from such a peace talk. He tweeted, quote, The first and main point is the capitulation of withdrawal of the Russian occupation troops from the territory of Ukraine in accordance with the norms of international law and the UN Charter. End quote. It remains to be seen if Xi Jinping can influence Putin into peace negotiations or if that is truly his attention at all. <clears throat> Do you know somebody who suffers from diabetes? Because California has just entered into a contract to make its own insulin at a price about 10 times cheaper than the current market. The contract is with nonprofit pharmaceutical company Civica Rx, and California Governor Gavin Newsom announced the 10 year agreement on Saturday. CalRx, the new state line of insulin, is slated to start production on three types of insulin later this year. For context, a 10-milliliter vial of insulin can cost as much as $300 from the three big companies that currently dominate the market. California's state insulin intends to sell that same 10 milliliters for under 30 bucks. However, this does come just after two of the companies, Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk, announced that they will be cutting their list prices down by 70% and 75% respectively. Even with that markdown, it's unlikely they will be able to compete in California with CalRx's remarkably cheap prices. And according to Gavin Newsom, CalRx's next goal is to start making their own version of Narcan, a drug critical to reversing opioid overdoses. Former President Donald Trump is expecting to be indicted sometime soon, and he is calling for Americans to protest on his behalf. Trump has been invited to testify in front of a grand jury in New York and could potentially face criminal charges for the hush money he had paid to adult film actress Stephanie Clifford, also known by her stage name, Stormy Daniels. On his social media platform, Truth Media, Trump posted in all caps, quote, The far and away leading Republican candidate and former president of the United States of America will be arrested on Tuesday of next week. Protest, take our nation back, end quote. According to the Associated Press, some anonymous law enforcement officials claim that the authorities are preparing in the case of an indictment. If he is indicted, Trump would be the first former president to be arrested in American history. And that concludes today's national and international news. Thanks, Josh. Finally, we'll take it back to Lee for today's weather forecast. The Northern Chautauqua Weather Update, being brought to you by Fredonia Radio Systems. I'm Lee Pai with your weather update. For today, the temperature is 34 degrees Fahrenheit, the low is 30 degrees, and the high is 41 degrees. It seems that the weather cannot make up its mind because it feels like 27 degrees. It has a 28 mile per hour winds today, yet it is extremely sunny today. Tuesday will be 47 degrees with a low of 36 and also a mostly sunny day. Stay warm, put your sunglasses on, and enjoy the sun while we have it. Back to you, Casio. Thank you, Lee and Josh. That'll wrap it up for this Monday's edition of News at Noon. Local news for this broadcast was prepared and read by Casio Fonseca. National news was prepared and read by Joshua Ribicov, while campus news and weather were prepared and read by Lee Pai. Board operations for this broadcast were performed by Alex Irwin. Join us for more top-of-the-hour news updates on Wednesday. Until then, take care. <laughs>